We're here today at La Segunda Bakery in Ybor City, one of the most famous bakeries in Tampa and actually across the country. This is where many of your favorite restaurants receive their bread, their Cuban bread, which they invented here. I'm here with Copeland, who is fourth generation owner. Correct. Yes. Hi, how you doing? I'm doing great. Here. 100 years? Yeah, this is our, we're celebrating our 100th year anniversary this year. Uh, we were established in 1915. My great-grandfather was actually born in Spain, went to Cuba to fight the Spanish-American War, learned how to make Cuban bread there, and then moved to Ybor City when the big influx of cigar workers came to town, and his business was feeding those workers. So why did he pick Ybor City? Well, Ybor City was a melting pot at the time, and a very uh, the, the business was booming at that time, especially with the cigar industry. And so uh, he, he chose this piece of uh, Florida, and. You know, ever since then, it's been blossoming. Now, you supply many restaurants here in Tampa, right. and it's with Cuban bread? Correct. Yeah, you know, we supply many restaurants in Tampa, and also nationally, we distribute the, the Cuban bread through food service. This, you would never realize that this bakery is so big. How many square feet is it? The building is 10,000 square feet, All right, and we're producing anywhere from 12 to 15,000 loaves a day. Wow, how do people do that? How many workers do you have? Right now we have about 48, almost 50. Uh, we're 24-7. We have three shifts that work every single day, and so uh, we just keep on producing. Now, Cuban bread, everybody in Tampa knows how delicious it is. Delicious it is. Um, what is Cuban bread? Did you really invent it? Well, the recipe my great-grandfather learned when he was in Cuba. So that recipe started there, but they actually don't make bread um, like we do anymore in Cuba because uh, when he learned how to make it we used a palmetto leaf down the top which creates a split on the loaf that you'll see here shortly and uh, you know throughout time in Cuba they stopped that tradition but we he brought the tradition here and then we continue it today to use the palmetto leaf on every single loaf of bread. Now I know everybody can't smell it but it smells absolutely delicious and look at these cases filled with all these pastries. Right. How did that evolve? Well actually in our first location was in closer to Ybor City in 8th Avenue. Uh, my grandfather moved over here to this location. At that time when my dad got into the business he opened another small bakery down the road and they did mainly retail, um, you know, pastries and coffee, etc. And so they actually merged in the 70s into one, into one business because everything was under one roof. And, uh, you know, we've evolved to expand to our deli operation, uh, more coffee and have more of a pastry offerings and cakes. Um, and so here we are. And then look at this menu. You can actually come in here, order a Cuban sandwich, order coffee, and it looks like you have breakfast as well. Yeah, we try to give the, we want to give the neighborhood um, a big offering, as many things as possible, and high quality, uh, high quality items. And so, you know, I, I think we've done a really good job with the community, and the community has responded to um, our items here. Now, you know I want to take a tour. I want to sure. see how the bread is made, and maybe you'll go ahead and let me make some bread, or maybe we can meet your dad. And then I want to go ahead and see what your favorite pastry is. Okay, sure, yeah, let's go, let's go find my dad. Well, you can see this is our family here. This is a family owned and operated since 1915, and uh, it's very important that we have our family involved. And so you can see my grandfather here, and my great-grandfather here, and the family, um, and that's how everything started. Where are you? Well, you can see me over here, actually. That's uh, my grandfather, me as a young boy, and then my dad on the side. <laughs> now, did they put you to work at that age? Yeah, everyone comes to work at that age. <laughs> yeah. That's when it all starts. So, a hundred year anniversary. Right. This place is beautiful. Thank you. You remodeled it? Yeah, early last year we remodeled. Wanted to get a little fresher look in here. Um, I think everyone has responded real well. It's, it's, we wanted to get the old um, rustic look, but still have a modern feel to it. And, I, and I, I'm very happy with how it turned out. So what's next on the tour? Let's go check out the ovens. Look at 
at all these ovens. They are huge. Is this where the bread is made? This is where it all ends, right here. Our, our baking process starts in the back and then flows up to the front or where we cook everything. So tell me the process. Well, like I said, we have on a normal ship, it's about eight men. And we have a master baker, um, three bench hands, I'm sorry, four bench hands, and then three oven men. And so the master baker will mix the dough, um, take it to the bench hands and scale it to size. Everything's rolled out by hand. Uh, you saw the palmetto leaves. We'll place palmetto leaves down the top. And then there's a proofing process um, that takes somewhere between three and four hours uh, before it's ready to be put into the ovens. And how many um, loaves of bread can fit in these ovens? Each oven can take about 300 at a time. That's of the long loaves. We also have a half loaf, um, so you could take 600 of those. And it takes about 30 to 45 minutes to cook, depending on the dough and the weather that day. It's, it's kind of, we're kind of dependent upon um, how the dough is affected by the weather. Tell me about that. Dependent on the weather, so if it's raining, do we not make bread? Well, when it's raining, there might be a lot of moisture. and The humidity level is high, so the dough will um, take on that moisture. And so there's a lot of tricks in the, of the trade of the bakers have um, to help that process. Um, they might not use as much water in the uh, mix. They might not use a steam room that day. They might use more refrigeration to, to dry it out a little bit. Uh, but all of our bakers have been here, most of them 20, 25 years, and uh, we don't have a set procedure. A lot of it's done by uh, the eyeball test and experience, and so it takes a lot of good, dedicated, quality bakers to make sure the bread comes out the way it does every day. So do you want to share your trade secrets so everybody can go ahead and make their own Cuban bread at home? <laughs> well, our recipe is real simple, actually, and, it, and we share it um, with people if, if they ask for it. Um, but it's, it's more about the process, what makes it more unique. And um, it's an eight hour to 10 hour process from start to finish. And so um, it's not easy. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's the labor of love. To, there's a lot of love that goes into this bread. There is a lot of love. There's a lot. Our family is heavily involved. Uh, a lot of the bakers I said have been here for so long. They feel like they're part of our family. We feel like they're part of our family. They take pride in the work and and helping uh, you know protect the the reputation of the business. And so um, there's a lot of love here. You talked about having a full loaf, which is huge, and right. then a half loaf. How big are they? Well, the traditional loaf is 36 inches, and the story was that. Um, in, in the early 20th century, there was a bread man, just like there used to be a milkman when I was younger. And so the, the bread man would drive around and deliver and he would leave a loaf of bread on your door. Um, and everyone, all the casitas had a nail on the door in Ybor City. So he would leave that loaf there. And the reason it was 36 inches so long is that it could feed the entire family. Wow, that's amazing. I love the story of putting it on the houses right. along with the milkman. Right. What about the half loaf? Right, well, so 15 or so years ago, um, when people started asking for the bread outside of the city of Tampa, we, we had to come up with an um, easier version for them to handle at their restaurants. And so we have an 18 inch loaf now um, that we um, bake, package, freeze, and ship uh, with some of our uh, food service providers, Cisco, US Foods, et cetera. Oh. And we can ship that nationwide. Wow, that's a lot of bread and a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So we talked about the bread and you know we walked in and saw all those wonderful pastries. Where are those made? Well, I can show you. We can go to the pastry shop and check them out. Let's go check them out. bread is awesome. Let's get to the sweet stuff. Where are we now? We're in the pastry shop uh, with uh, one of our pastry chefs named Sam. What's he, he making he over is, there? Uh, he had puff pastry. I mean, that's the puff dough. He's getting ready to make some kind of turnover, I guess, when he gets done. We'll see it. They put it on the table and then we'll start cutting it up. What is he doing with that big machine back there? That is uh, basically an electronic rolling pin. If you see it, the dough just gets thinner and thinner and thinner until he gets it to the, thick, the, uh, the, the thickness that he wants, rolls it on the table. And so that's a lot of pastries you have. 
Yeah, we have about 250 different kinds at one time or the other. So can you name them all for me? No. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Come on, Tony. If I go in the showcase, I can tell you what they are, but I don't, you know, <laughs> there is an, an enormous amount of pastry that we, that we make here. Do you taste test them every day? I used to, but now I, I can't get fat anymore. I can't, I can't put all that weight on anymore. I have to stay, I have to try and stay slim. Now, I, I rolled a loaf of bread, but I'm not making the turnover. <laughs> I can see what he's going to do. He's going he's gonna to cut them to size, the, the turnovers. He's got the, uh, you know, whatever they call a dough cutter, I guess. He's going to make them all that, like that. Sam is very intense over here. He is intense. <laughs> he, sometimes he's too intense. <laughs> How long has Sam been here? Sam, what have you been here, about five or six years now? Six. Six. Wow, look at that. Everything is so precise. Yeah, well, we want everything to look the same. <laughs> you know, it would be nice to have one small one, one big one, one little one. Here come the apples. The apple, that's pastry bag. You put the apple in there. It looks so good that I could eat it now, I think. The apple's good. That's a good, good brand of apple. That he'll, usually, we're going to stop them when they get through with their bag, but usually they do the whole thing, and that way they, you know, they continue to do the same thing every time. I'm assuming they roll it up afterwards? Yeah. That's what they're going to do right, right, when they get through with their bag, I'm going to have them stop. Sam, can you make a cup? Of, okay, what gonna, he's going to egg wash it now. I mean, egg wash the edges so when they fold it, it'll stick together. That's uh, about a 50-50 egg wash. Egg, egg and water mixture. There's a lot that goes into this process. Is this why I don't make them at home and I come here and buy them? That's exactly right. A, that, you know, pastry is a really intensive hand labor. That's why you can't hardly find people to work anymore like that. All right, we have the egg done. There you go. Now you're folding it over, and that's, basically that's your finished product until it's baked off. So next it goes in the oven. They will go in the oven like that, or actually we can probably, we can freeze them all and take them out the next morning or whatever we need. If we need them during the day, we take them out and just egg wash the top, put them in the oven, frozen, and they will come out. Well, they are, they're fresh. You know, there's nothing, it's not like we buy them in a box. They are done here, they're made here. Will you show me how to make some bread? Okay, sure will. Let's do it. Let's go roll some bread. is going to show me how to roll a loaf of bread, right? Right. Is that I what think you call it? I'm gonna try it? yes, we try to roll a loaf of bread. Okay, so right. where do we start? Right here, you, you got you're gonna take as much air of it as you can initially with your hand or with your arm. Like this guy. You take it out, alright? So it's flattened out, most of the air is out, and you're gonna take it, flip it over, and seam it like that. 
Okay. And take the other side and make another seam. And then, really, you should use your arm again to press it down. So then you initially will have the first, first uh, what you call it, they call it a baston. Which is what do you call it? A baston. And what is that? Uh, the, the, uh, the beginning of the bread, the okay. beginning of the rope, okay? And then you're gonna just take both hands and work it outward as much as you can until you have the hook. Now, I don't make a perfect one anymore. I mean, not that I ever did, but <laughs> at least it looks like a loaf. Okay, so that's what you have to do. You wanna try one now? Oh, I'm scared, but yeah. Okay. I'm gonna try one. All right, let's go. Let's get this one out of here. Bring it out when you get a chance. <laughs> ah. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. I'm gonna have you hold this. All right, I'll have you hold. You I don't know it. if I should be scared or not. Get as much. Get all the air out. Now with my arm, right? You can, yeah. Okay. Pull it out. There you go. Now you're gonna grab both ends. And I wore black, just the perfect color for a rolling bread. Yeah, right, you get all <laughs> full of flour. Uh, 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 oh, oh. Pick it up on both ends and flip it. Oh. The other, this, there you go. Now this, you're gonna you're gonna steam this back in. All right. Now bring the other one over. All right. Here we going. The second seam. And now flatten it out again. Okay. Here goes the elbow. The elbow. I'm getting this, Tony. I'm getting, getting this. this. All right, now you're going to bring it back. No, no. Oh. Your hand. Bring your hand both okay. sides like that. Sort of roll it into each other. Uh, oh, right. oh. So now you got the start of a loaf. It's probably going to look better than mine. Wait a second. Tony, I can't show you up. How, how many all years right, have now, you been doing this? All right, now you're going to take both hands in the middle. Okay. One on top of the other and start rolling out. With both hands. No. One hand to the right, one hand to the left. Oh. Oh, look at there that. Look at that. There you go. Wow. How far do I roll it out? Uh, probably about right there. Yeah, the dough is kind of soft. It's it rolling very easy. That's better than mine. <laughs> is that a good roll? That was a good roll. <laughs> good job. Now I put it over here? Uh, we hired bacon. Really? Really. <laughs> How long have you been doing this? I've uh, been here since uh, 1972. Something like that. 1972, and More how? Now you're having an anniversary. A hundred years. A hundred years. Yeah. The bakery was started in 1915 by my grandfather. Oh wow! So we are now really in our fourth generation, with Copeland being the fourth generation. Uh huh. My cousin and I, Raymond, we were the third generation. He sold his part to my son, so now he's the fourth generation. And so, does everybody work in the bakery? The family? Yes. At one time or the other, they have. And did you start off rolling the bread? Did I start off rolling? No. No? I, I was never a full-time. I mean, I did do this for a while, but I never was a full-time baker. Okay? I mean, I did it when it created emergencies when we couldn't find people to work. Uh-huh. I would come in there and do this. Well, I think I'm a little scared because he might put me to work if someone calls in sick. I need to like mess up my bread a little bit to make sure that I'm not doing uh, it too well. Actually, pretty good shape. <laughs> actually, came out real nice. They can, you know, won't take but about one second on that end to fix it. Hey, good. Thank you very much. Okay, well these are our palmetto leaves. Uh, every single loaf will place a strip of palmetto down the top and what it does is helps the bread open up when it gets in the oven. It's similar to a score that other bakeries use, but normally they use a knife or even a string or even a laser. Uh, but the tradition that my great grandfather learned and brought to Ybor City uh, was the palmetto leaf. So it's not just for looks, making the bread look pretty. Well, it, it does make, it, it helps the bread get to the shape that we want, and it's an important, you, you can't have uh, the bread that we have without some type of score down the top, but it's our tradition and um, something that we've always done and that we always will do. So he actually comes out here, chops it every day? Well, yeah, you can see Richard here is, is getting the palmetto ready for the shift. Uh, he'll, the full front will come in, he'll chop it down to size and then he'll start ripping them in half so because we use two from each frond um, and on a big loaf of bread we use four. All right so it all starts here with chopping it up. This is it.
That was a great tour. I did have to leave, though, because I think your dad was going to go ahead and put me to work because my bread was so good. Yeah, we need some workers. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I had to leave. I want to go ahead and do the fun stuff. Sure. What is your favorite? I'm going to say the guava turnover is my favorite pastry. So you're going to have some dessert with me, correct? Yeah, do you want to try one? Um, I think you should have that. And then what is this right here? This is our scachata, also an Ebor tradition. Um, it's a cold pizza. It's Ooh. a little bit different. It's made with sweet bread um, dough, and so just give it a shot. All right, let's go ahead and take a taste. How do you work here every single day? Do you eat one every day? I eat a little bit every day, but everything in moderation. <laughs> <laughs> You're smart. Okay, so this is the... This is the guava turnover. Okay. Mm. 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 <laughs> I don't know what else to say. It's decadent. Thank you. Now, where's the pizza? You want to try this gachata? Hang on mm -hmm. one second. Here, let me have that. You know I want that back. Okay. <laughs> I'll get you something to go. Okay, so tell me how this is made. Okay, like I said, it's a sweet dough. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually the same kind of dough we use for our media noche bread. And then we have a special sauce that we put on top of it. It's got ground beef, um, you know, marinara sauce, and a couple other special ingredients um, to give it that uh, soft crust, but um, good flavor. Okay, so I think we need to say goodbye so I can go ahead and enjoy this pizza. How you would go. you say it? Yeah, it's gachata. So if you're looking for some great Cuban bread, Cuban sandwiches, coffee, all these decadent pastries, make sure you come to La Segunda in Ybor City. Thank Flavor you. to suit any taste. Thank you very much. Mm. Delicious. Good, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs>